take a look at the whole component. First, let's take a look at the ORS anchor kit. This kit is supplied in the box like this. You can sterilize the box with autoclave before use. When you open the box by sliding the cover, the kit contains one big screw handle, two long shafts that can be used like this. And very small screw handle that will be used for the insertion of the screws in the palatal side of the maxilla. But for palatal side use, I strongly recommend it to use motor driven handpiece or e driver. I will explain more details about it later. And there are two drills that will be used for pilot drilling when you use small diameter mini screws less than 1.2 millimeters the recommended diameter of pilot drill is about 70 percent those of the diameter of mini screws that will be used for example one millimeter for 1.2 millimeter screws now i will show how to join the long shaft to the manual driver handle First, insert the shaft into the handle while pushing back the secure ring to release the chuck. And then and let the ring come forward to fasten the shaft securely. Then it's done. Now the shaft securely tightened and ready to use. Next, let's take a look at the screws. This is Ostem Ors anchor. It was pre-packed like this and also it was pre-sterilized so further sterilization is not necessary and it is very convenient and easy to use after tearing up the outside cover pack take out the plastic wrapped screw inside remove the cap on top then you can see the head of the screw With the driver shaft, just to simply apply the general force to combine them until the head of the screw secure to the shaft. It's now all ready to use. Okay, let's put the screw at the center of the space between the roots of 5 and 6 in upper left segment. When do you do papillary infiltration injection, the tissue around injection point turns white. Then you can clearly see where the mucogingival junction is, that is the border between attached and free gingiva. So this is attached gingiva. In typodontal, let's suppose there is a thin line as mucogingival junction. Once you identify the mucogingival junction, you can put the screw at different location. At the papillary area, at the apical area, just below the junction. But the best place to put a mini screw is close to the junction in attached gingiva. Actually in clinic, with the dental pool, Mark here by pressing the tissue gently. Then the tissue was compressed. And we can see the thin line between the roots. As an insertion point, I'm going to choose a dot where on the line marked and an attached gingiva and close to the border. Once the insertion point is determined, pick up the 1.6 mm in diameter, 6 or 8 mm long screw according to the thickness of the soft tissue. At this time, I pick 8 mm long one, place the tip of screw at the insertion point, and set the path of insertion 
medial distally, not heading to neither medially or distally, just aim the center between the roots. And occlusal gingivally, not heading to neither gingivally or occlusally. At the beginning, set the occlusal gingival pass almost 90 degree to the bone surface. By doing so, we can prevent the screw from slipping at the start of insertion. But this is, this is not the final occlusal gingival pass. After setting up the initial insertion pass, use your palm grip rather than pencil grip. With palm grip like this, while maintaining the pass constantly, press against to the bone gently, and then start to turn the handle clockwise to insert the screw one or two millimeter. After inserting one or two millimeters, stop the insertion and turn the shaft in the opposite direction to retract or pull back about half. Then, then change the occlusal gingival pass about 20 to 30 degrees apically. After checking the final pass again, restart to turn clockwise to finish the insertion. Until the cervical collar of the screw lightly touch the gingival soft tissue surface. Caution! Do not change the pass while inserting the screw. It can cause the breakage of the screw, especially the tip. Let's do it again in a model that we cannot see the root, like in our real patient. Step 1. Identify the mucogingival junction. The attached gingival turns white on the papillary injection. Do not necessarily the whole tooth on the side only around the insertion point. You can see the tissue turn white under the injection and the junction can be identified easily. Step 2. With a probe, mark a vertical line between the root. Do not use a pencil. Press the probe to mark in a real patient. Step 3. Determine the point of entry. You can put the screw anywhere along the line, but in the attached gingiva as much as possible. Gingival margin area, the space is narrow. And the bone is very thin. Apically, there is more wider space, thick cortical bone, but mucosa is very movable. It is not good for stability of the screw. So the first choice of entry point will be close to the junction in attached gingiva. Step 4. Set the initial pass of insertion. Medial distally, aim the center between the roots, not heading to neither distally or mesially. Occlusal gingivally, perpendicular to the bone surface. Why? To prevent from slipping of the screw at initial penetration. Step 5. Start turning the shaft to insert the screw 1 or 2 millimeters. Step 6. Stop insertion and reverse turn to pull back half to prevent fracture of the screw or tip of the screw when changing the insertion pass. Step 7. Set the in final insertion pass. Change the occlusal gingival pass apically 20 to 30 degrees. The reason why change the pass to increase contact surface between the screw and the cortical bone. Two, placing the screw more wider space around root apex. Step eight, finish the insertion. While maintaining the final insertion pass, keep turning clockwise until the color of the screw lightly touch the soft tissue surface.
do the final adjustment as needed. Notice the screw was angulated slightly toward the apex. Finally, the screw successfully has been placed. I'm going to explain how to place a mini screw at the inferior area of anterior nasal spine. For example, for intrusion of upper anterior, etc. At this area, there is a thick and plenty of cortical bone. And normally, there is a thick and large labiofrenium too. We should use so called closed method. We are going to bury the head of the screw under the soft tissue. After the injection, we should incise the tissue about 5 mm. Then expose the bone and use a 6 mm long with a diameter 1.6 mm screw. The screw does not need to be long. For closed method, a short screw with a large diameter is better. Set the path of insertion as needed. For example, adequate angulation for intrusion of upper incisors. Once the insertion path is set, turn the driver clockwise to finish the insertion. After insertion with long ligature wire, about one, one, uh, 0 0.12 inch in diameter or so, make an extension by twisting the wire to expose the wire out of the tissue. Then do suture with one or two stitches. Like this. And cut the wire as needed and form a hook like this for elastic application. And then you can hook the elastics as needed. The colored elastic in, elastics in this video is just for explanation. You can use clear elastics or clear chain strings in real patient. Bonus! To intrude the upper incisors, you can use two mini screws as shown here. Another good place to insert a mini screw in maxilla is infragigomatic crest area. Here, this is gigomatic arch. As shown in the dry skull, in this area, the cortical bone is very thick and plenty, and there is no major nerve branch, so it is safe and provides very good bone support for miniscule stability. But in, the, in this area, the mucosa is very thick and movable. As far as stability is concerned, we should use the thicker and longer mini screws. For example, 2 mm or at least 1.8 mm in diameter. As the screw is located far from the arch wire or bracket level, 10 to 12 mm long screw should be used. I prefer to use a screw 2 mm in diameter and 10 mm in length. Another advantage of placing a mini screw in this area is as the screw, especially the tip of the screw, will be placed far from the root. There is less interference between the screw and the root when the tooth moves. 
But when the screw head is placed far away from the teeth, it can cause severe irritation to the tissue. So care should be taken in placing the screw. Let's take a look at the step-by-step -step procedures in the model. Step 1. Exploring the area. With the index finger, examine the area and determine the position where the screw should be located. Step 2. Determine the insertion point. After palpating the area, determine the point of insertion. Measure distally between the root is good, but not always necessarily between the root. And to minimize tissue irritation, bocolingually place the screw close to the tooth side as much as possible. Occlusal gingivally close to the mucosensible junction. Step 3. Set the initial pass and start the placement. Once the insertion point is determined, start the insertion perpendicular to the bone surface to prevent the screw from slipping. And with general pressure, insert the screw about 3 to 4 mm. Step 4. Change the path of insertion 1. After 3 to 4 mm insertion, start turning the screw. By turning it counterclockwise, pull back the screw about 0.5 to 1 mm and change the path 20 to 30 degrees toward the tooth and insert the screw almost halfway through. Step 5. Change the path too. Once again, stop turning the screw and by turning it counterclockwise, pull back the screw 1 or 2 mm again and change the path around 20 to 30 degrees again. Place the head of the screw close to the teeth as much as possible. Step 6. Finish the insertion. Set the final path as needed. By turning it clockwise, finish the insertion. Please notice the position of the screw head in relation to the very thin mucosa in this area. Caution. This is the final pass. Starting the pass perpendicular to the bone surface. Do not engage change the pass while turning the screw. The tip of the screw can be broken. Always pull back and loosen it, then change the pass. In maxillary palatal side, there are several places to put a mini screw, as marked in blue in the picture. Among them, at this time, I will show you how to place the mini screw on the maxillary palatal alveolus between the roots, as marked in green. We can put the screw between the roots of six and seven, five and six. 4 and 5. The distance of the screw is less than 8 to 10 mm from CEJ. Cardiac study shows they run vessels and nerve from 12 mm in average from CEJ. The soft palate area is not behind the 7, the soft palate area is not good for screw placement because cortical bone is very thin and there is palatal foramen. So the between 6 and 7 will be the most posterior position for palatal alveolus placement. Let's do it on the type of dent. Step 1. Determine the distance from CJ. 
around 8 millimeter will be fine less than 10 millimeters step 2 a necessary around the insertion point small amount not the whole tooth step 3 mark the reference line by pressing the tissue aim the center between the root not tilting neither medially or distally use a dental mirror to check the correct orientation and press the tissue then you can see the reference line step 4 determine the point of entry step 5 pick up the screw because the soft tissue in palatal alveolus is thicker than that of the buccal side I'm going to use 1.6 mm in diameter 8 mm long screw use motor driven handpiece or e-driver with a short shaft in every palatal insertion it is strongly recommended to use motor driven handpiece or e-driver with a different lengths of shaft so step 6 set the insertion pass aim the center between the root check from multiple direction with the dental mirror set the insertion pass occluded gingivally perpendicular to the surface step 7 finish the insertion once you set up the pass press the button of the handpiece and finish the insertion keep the pass constantly during the entire insertion Using a small manual hand, handle in palatal side, it is very difficult to manipulate the shaft. Difficulty in maintaining the pass straight, it can cause wobbling during insertion. Therefore, for palatal side insertion, please use motor driven handpiece or e driver with a different length of shaft. Let's take a look at in a real patient. Topical anesthesia, infiltration anesthesia, mark the reference line by pressing the tissue. With 1.6mm diameter, 8mm long, set the insertion pass perpendicular to the surface. Aim the center between the root. Use motor driven handpiece or e driver with a short shaft. Let's take a look at the screw placement in the mid palatal suture area. To place mini screws in mid palatal area, we should consider two areas, anterior and posterior part. Part 1. Let's take a look at the posterior area first. The mid palatal suture area provides very good bone support for both adult and especially in growing patients. In growing patient, because of the rapid remodeling of bone, the screw placed in both buccal and palatal alveolus are not stable. But even in a growing patient, as the bone of mid-palatal suture area is very dense, it provides good stability for mini screws. 
But as the middle part of suture is not fully matured in growing and young patient, it is better to place the screw slightly off centered position rather than center or mid part of suture like this. As the soft tissue in the posterior mid part of area is relatively thin and tight, short and large diameter screw should be used. 1.6 mm in diameter and 6 mm long screw will do. When placing mini screws in mid palatal suture area, it is strongly recommended to use motor driven handpiece with a mid side length shaft rather than a short one and set a passive insertion perpendicular to the occlusal plane to avoid the interference between the incisors and handpiece and to keep the pass straight during insertion. Perpendicular to the occlusal plan, use medium size shaft. Let's see the step by step procedures. With the mid side length shaft and 1.6 mm, 6 mm screw slightly off centered left or right side as needed, set the passive insertion perpendicular to the occlusal plan. Then press the button to start insertion. Make sure the clockwise rotation. With the general pressure, keep the pass straight until the color of the screw touches the soft tissue surface. A screw was placed a little bit off-centered in mid part of suture area like this. Part 2. Anterior part of mid palate and rugae area. In the anterior part of mid part of suture, there is a nasopalatine foramen and canal here. As is shown in the CT image, the canal runs from nasal cavity to oral cavity like this. If you put the screw perpendicular to the bone surface, there is a risk of invading the canal. To avoid the canal invasion, if you set the insertion pass perpendicular to the occlusal plane, then you can minimize the risk of canal invasion. As the soft tissue of anterior mid palatal suture area is thicker than posterior, choose mid side long shaft and 1.6 mm in diameter and 8 mm long screw. In summary, determine the point of entry slightly behind to avoid the canal and set the path of insertion not perpendicular to the bone surface but perpendicular to occlusal plane like this it can minimize the possibility of canal involvement another position to place screws in anterior palate is rugae area right and left side of anterior mid palatal suture as the soft tissue in rugae area is thick and plenty, long and large diameter screw is needed. 1.6 mm, 8 mm screw can be used. Choose a mid side long shaft. Let's place a screw in palatal rugae between 22 and 23. Step 1. Determine the insertion point. After injection around the insertion point, with a probe, press the tissue to mark a line. Step 2. Set the path of insertion. With the motor-driven handpiece, mid-side length shaft, and 1.6 mm, 8 mm screw, measure distally straight to the center between the root to minimize the risk of touching the root. Occlusal gingivalry gives some angulation between perpendicular to bone surface and occlusal plane. Once the pass is determined, step 3, press the button and start the insertion. Clockwise rotation to finish the insertion. Maintain the pass straight all the way through.
Finally, a screw is placed in Ruge area. Let's take a look at the placement of mini screw in mandibular vocal alveolus. Interradicular placement between the root. The basic principle is almost the same like in maxillary alveolus. Step 1. Identify the mucogingival junction. After topical papillary injection, you can clearly see the border between attached and free gingiva. That is mucogingival junction. Step 2. Mark a vertical line. With a dental probe, mark a line by pressing the tissue at the center between the roots. By referring to a panoramic or periphical x-ray, you can judge and assume the root axis and the center between the root. Step 3. Determine the point of entry. Once the vertical line marked, determine the point of entry. You can put anywhere on the line because in the free gingiva, the tissue is very movable. It is not good for stability of the screw. Choose an attached gingiva, apically as much as possible for wider space. Step 4. Set the initial path of insertion. Once the point of entry is determined, set the initial path of insertion. Measure distally toward the center between the roots. Occlusal gingivally start from the angulation perpendicular to the bone surface. Because there exists a lot of shape variation in the vocal cortex of mandible, care should be taken to prevent slipping of the screw at the initial stage of insertion. Once the initial pass of insertion is set, turn the driver clockwise to insert the screw 1 or 2 mm. And start turning. Step 5. Set the final pass of insertion. Then by reverse turn, count clockwise, pull back the screw halfway. Then change the path to apically around 20 to 30 degree or as needed. Step 6. Finish the insertion. Turn the driver clockwise to finish the insertion. Start with the perpendicular angle to bone surface. Pull back by reverse turn to prevent breaking the tip of the screw. Change the path of insertion. Give angulation 20 to 30 degrees or as needed to apically, then turn clockwise to finish the insertion. Maintain the insertion path straight all the way through. Caution! Never change the insertion path while turning the screw. It can cause the breakage of the screw or tip of the screw. Notice the angulation of the screw to the occlusal plane. You can place the screw with the same manner between 6 and 7 and 4 and 5. But when you try to place a screw in the front between 3 and 4 or 2 and 3 for example, as the space between the root is narrow, you should lower the position to the free gingiva area but in free gingiva, the screw is less stable or you'd better use so-called closed method. Otherwise, to place an attached gingiva, you should choose screws with a small diameter. 1.4 or 1.2 mm in diameter rather than 1.6 mm. You can put the screw up to 1.4 mm in diameter without pilot drilling. But when you choose a screw 1.2 mm in diameter, as the lower buccal cortical bone is more dense, without pilot drilling, it is fragile and can be broken. So it is strongly recommended to do pilot drilling with a drill about 70% in diameter of the screw. That is 1 mm drill for 1.2 mm screw, 
before inserting the screw with a drill one millimeter in diameter at the point of entry at the center between the root low to apically but stay on the attached gingiva as much as possible with the with the low speed saline irrigation to cool down to minimize damage to the bone just puncture the cortical bone then pick up a screw 1.2 millimeter in diameter insert the screw at the hole by turning the driver clockwise Placement of mini screw on buckle shelf of mandible. Another good position to place mini screws in mandible is buckle shelf area. This is buckle shelf. Buckle shelf provides flat and thick cortical bone. Usually the shelf starts between first and second molar, but a lot of individual variations exist. When placing screws in this area, we should consider very thick and movable mucosa, also very thick cortical bone. So we should choose the thickest screw in diameter and longer one. I prefer to use a 2.0 mm in diameter and 8 or 10 mm in length. And there is a high possibility of irritating the cheek when placed away from the teeth. We should place the screw close to the tooth as much as possible like this. Let's take a look at the procedure step by step. Step 1. Examine the area. With the index finger, examine the area where the best location to place the screw is. Step 2. Determine the point of entry. Measure distally between the root if possible. It depends on the location of buckle shelf. Occlude gingivally. To minimize cheek irritation, set the entry point close to the tooth side, usually close to the mucosensible junction. Step 3. Set the initial pass of insertion. To prevent the slipping of the screw at the initial stage of insertion, start the insertion with angulation almost perpendicular to the bone surface. By turning clockwise, Insert a screw 3 to 4 mm first. Then stop turning and by reverse turning, pull back the screw halfway. Step 4. Set the pad final pass. After pull back, change the pads close to the teeth. Around 40 to 60 degrees or as needed. To minimize cheek irritation. Caution. Do not change the path while turning the driver. It can cause breakage of the screw, especially the tip of the screw. Step 5. Finish the insertion. Once the final pass determined, finish the insertion by turning clockwise. You can stop the insertion as needed. The screw is placed away from the root. Take a look at the difference between left and right side. Interradicular placement between 5 and 6, between 3 and 4, and buckle shelf placement.
screw placement in mandibular symphysis area. We can put screws in symphysis area to intrude the lower incisors, for example. In this area, the cortical bone is very thick and dense, but as the space between the teeth is narrow, it is difficult to place the screw between the teeth in attached gingiva. So we should go further down to the mucosa. But as we go down, there is just plenty of tissue. So we should consider to use so-called closed method. But in many times, you can put the screw without incision. Even though we apply open method without incision, the head can be covered by the tissue later. We can put a screw between lower central incisors or two mini screw between one and two, sometimes between two and three as needed. In choosing a screw, movable mucosa, no danger anatomic structure, dense and thick cortical bone, so for stability, we'd better choose large in diameter, but for safety, you may compromise and use one a little bit smaller in diameter. To minimize tissue irritation, the head should not be exposed too much. I prefer to use 1.6 mm in diameter, 6 mm long screw. Let's see in type dent. It is very difficult to put screws between the root of low incisor due to narrow space. We should lower the position apically. Trying to put between the roots as much as possible. It is important to find a safe, stable, and minimal irritating position. Once the insertion point is determined, start the insertion. You can set the path of insertion as needed even though it is much safer to insert the screw toward the apical direction, but if the purpose of the screw is to intrude the low incisors, for example, the path should be set accordingly. The way to give retention for the elastics, etc. Placement of mini screw in retrovelar pad area of mandible. Another position to place screws in mandible is retromelar pad area. We can place the screws to retract whole mandibular dentition or to upright the molar, etc. Anatomically, the low molar position in lingually than the pad area. So you should understand the shape of the mandible. It is a V-shaped. Caution should be taken when placing screws not to place in the empty space right behind the tooth. The retromolar pad area provides very good quality of cortical bone. The bone is very thick and dense and it is covered by very thick and movable soft tissue. So we should use so-called closed method. But in this area, you don't need to cut the tissue in inserting the screw. That means if you place a screw directly without incision, automatically it will be covered by the tissue a few days later and it will turn into closed method. So you need a small incision to expose the head only when removing the screw. After local injection, to find the right location, first examine and locate with index finger where retromolar pad is. Keep in mind, thick and dense cortical bone with very thick and movable mucosa, 
and then we should use screws large in diameter, longer in length. The larger and longer is the better. But as the head will be buried in the tissue, I prefer to use 1.8 mm and 8 mm or 2.0 and 8 mm. Once the point of entry is determined, insert the screw until the head compress the tissue real tight. For closed method, we need wire extension. Before the head sinks into the tissue, with the ligature wire, or one zero or or one two in diameter, by twisting it around the neck of the screw, make a wire extension, and cut it as needed. Make a small hook. Then you can hook elastics or coil spring, etc. Squeeze the hook for retention of the elastics. You can hook it to the spur or bracket in the front. Even though the head is covered by the tissue several days later, as the hook is still exposed, you can change the elastic three to four weeks later. At the lingual side of the mandible, we place the mini screws very rarely because the lingual cortex of mandible becomes thinner from anterior to posterior. The posterior lingual cortex is very thin. The screw placed on lingual posterior part of mandible is very unstable and it is very irritating to the tongue. So it is not a good idea but if you have to or insist on placing a screw at the lingual posterior area of mandible, you'd better do so-called bicortical insertion. With a screw 12mm or 16mm in length, start from the lingual side and engage the buccal cortex, penetrating the bone between the roots. But it is too complicated to place a screw. So the posterior lingual cortex of mandible is not good place to place a screw. At the anterior part, the bone is thicker than posterior, but the space between the teeth is very narrow, so it is difficult to place a screw. And also it can cause irritation to the tongue. So rather than lingual, you'd better find labial application. But there are some exceptions. Many patients have big torus. If there is a torus, it provides good position to place miniscule. As there is no important anatomic structure and the bone is dense, so you can place a screw in vertical pattern while trying to minimize the irritation to the tongue. To place a screw at the torus, you should use motor-driven handpiece or e-drive, for example, and a shaft with medium size in length. With a manual driver, it is difficult to orient the pass properly. Patient cannot open the mouth that much. 1.6 mm and 6 mm screw will do. Removal of mini screw. 
Removal of a screw is not difficult. To remove the screw, you don't need any infiltration injection unless the patient is very sensitive. Gel type or spray type topical anesthesia will do. After small amount of topical application, engage the driver to the head of the screw and turn the driver counterclockwise until the screw comes out. Then pull out gently. You can use a pincet or a needle holder at the end. After removal of the screw, apply HTO2 for disinfection. For the medication or treatment is not necessary. Normally, the small hole will be healed without any problems.